Okay, let's continue to apply the first fundamental theorem of algebra, sorry, of calculus. This has been a long night, guys. Okay, first fundamental theorem of calculus. Now remember, the first step is to find the antiderivative of this equation and then to plug in the limits and subtract them. That's how we apply this first fundamental theorem of calculus. So it looks like this particular problem is going to be another u substitution. So I'm going to say u is 2x minus 1. So du is going to be 2dx. So it looks like I need to plug in a 2 and a 1 half to keep it balanced. So now that is my du. So I've got 1 half integral from 1 to 5 of x over square root of u du. Now, you'll notice this is not all in the same language, so I cannot do anything with it yet. So this is going to be that special u substitution where I have to do that extra step of taking my u and solving it for x. So x equals u plus 1 all over 2. And then plugging that in for x. So I'm going to do that, 1 half integral from 1 to 5, u plus 1 all over 2, all over square root, and then du. Okay, let's start to simplify this and see what I can get. So first off, I'm going to do leaf flip change with that square root of u. So I can turn it into a multiplying instead of a dividing. So this is going to be 1 half, 1 to 5, u plus 1 over 2 square roots of u, du. Now, I might, I'm going to do something a little weird with this next step. I'm going to kind of separate this like this. Can we agree that this equals this? If I were to multiply that 1 half in, that 2 would just go on the bottom, and I'd get the same thing. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because all of this right now is kind of starting to look pretty complicated. I'm even already starting to run out of room, and I haven't even actually taken the antiderivative yet. So, I'm going to take this 1 half and take it to the outside to turn this into a 1 fourth. So basically I'm multiplying them together and I'm doing that just so that my inside looks a little bit nicer. So this is now to the, I'm changing it u to the 1 half and now I'm going to do that trick where if I have a denominator I can separate it like that. So I'm going to bring this u to the 1 half up to make it negative. And then you guys remember anytime we multiply we actually add our exponents and there's a secret 1 here. So this is going to be 1 fourth integral from 1 to 5 of u to the 1 half plus u to the negative 1 half. Now, I am almost ready to anti-differentiate using my power rule. The one thing that I forgot, and this is actually pretty typical of me, I forget this all the time. I forgot to translate my limits into u. Right now, this integral is not all in the same language because I'm still using those limits from when they were x's. Limits from when they were x's. So I need to translate these limits into u limits. And I do that by plugging them in to my u equation. So I'm going to plug in the top limit, 2 times 5 minus 1. So that top limit should actually be a 9. And plug in my bottom limit, 2 times 1 minus 1, which is actually still a 1. Sweet.
So all of this limits should actually be a 9 instead of a 5. That was my mistake, and it's a very common one to make. Okay, now my limits match the language of the rest of the integral. They're all in the language of u. So now I can take my antiderivative. So I've got 1 fourth. This is going to become u to the 3 halves over 3 halves plus u to the 1 half over 1 half. And I'm not going to put plus c because this is a definite integral, so it's going to be from 1 to 9 using my u limits. Let's start to simplify this a little. So this is going to be 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus 2 over 1, or just 2, u to the 1 half from 1 to 9. Okay, let's bring it up hopefully for the last time. Now, remember that I do not need to plug my equation back in for u. Because these limits are in the language of u, I can just plug these limits in for u because everything's in the same language. So to make this a little easier on me, because right now it looks pretty gross, I'm going to distribute my 1 fourth in. So I'm going to get 2 twelfths, or 1 sixth, because 1 fourth times 2 thirds is 2 twelfths. And then I'm going to change this to u square root of u cubed, plus 1 fourth times 2 is 1 half square root of u from 1 to 9. And now let's plug things in. So I've got 1 six square root of 9 cubed plus 1 half square root of 9, that's my upper limit, minus, here's my lower limit, 1 six square root of 1 cubed plus 1 half square root of 1. Now, let's start to simplify this. If you put all of that into your calculator, you should get 6. And if you put all of that into your calculator, you should get 2 thirds. So I subtract those, and I get a final answer of 16 thirds. Phew! That was a long one, and now I'm done. Okay, I am going to have you try number 13 on your own. It's actually easier or at least I should say the antiderivative is easier. You still have a u substitution. So I want you to practice everything we've learned in the video so far to try this one on your own and then come back and see how you did. Let's see how you did. So if u is 2x, then du is 2dx. So I add a 2 in there and a 1 half to balance it so that I can get my du. So now I've got cosine of u du, but I still need to translate my limits to be in the language of u and not, t and not x anymore. So I plug my limits into my u equation to get pi and 0 now. Now that everything is in the language of u, I can take the antiderivative, and the antiderivative of cosine is sine with my limits from 0 to pi, plug in my upper limit, plug in my lower limit, subtract them, and you should get 0. And that right there is your first look at the first fundamental theorem of calculus. In the last video for today, we're going to talk about start plus accumulation.